Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. You know, I get so many questions about wood. What wood should I use for this and what wood could I use for that? So today I'm going to do a quick video on just softwood. So let's get started. So to set the stage, first of all, softwoods typically refer to wood that comes from coniferous or needle bearing type trees. Hardwoods typically come from what we call deciduous trees or broadleaf trees. Don't always think of softwoods as soft wood because in the softwood family, there are some woods that are very hard. And the same is true in the hardwood family. There are some woods that are actually very soft. So you can get a mix and I'm going to show you some examples of those. Now, sometimes when you're at the lumber store and you're trying to find some economical wood, somebody at the lumber store will point you to something called SPF. Sometimes you'll find that stamped on wood. Sometimes it'll be on a label that looks like this. What that stands for is spruce pine fir. And sometimes those bundles at the lumber store, it's everything mixed together. Spruce pine fir all in the same bundle. Other times it's separated, but it still may say SPF on it. So you're going to have to ask what it is that you're looking through. So I've laid out three boards here. This is spruce, pine, and fir. Now I'm going to take out pine because I've already covered that in another video and I'll put the link for that at the end of this video so you'll be able to go and have a look at that if you haven't seen that. So I'm going to take it out of there but before I do I want you to know that wood is measured in a hardness scale and it's called a jank, a J-A-N-K-A, -A, Janka scale. And when we look at the hardness of woods this is typically the softest wood of these three bundles. This is around 400 pounds. It's measured in pounds, the Janka scale measured in pounds. This is 400 pounds. This is a little bit more around 420. And fur is actually the hardest at 660. But I'm going to take this out because really today we're really discussing spruce and fir because they're very similar looking woods. So the difference between spruce and fir is spruce is typically a little bit lighter. It's not near as strong. Uh, usually it's pretty straight grained, but you can also see when you look at it, there's quite a variation between the different tones in the wood, uh, the growth rings. You can see the quite dark to quite light um, and that I'll show you in a little while how that can actually be a benefit to you. Um, the same is very uh, very true with the Douglas fir. Again, very often very straight grains. Trees typically grow straight and tall. Um, and again, you have this variation of the dark to the light when you're talking about the grains of wood. Um, typically, this is a little bit lighter wood. This is a little bit darker in color. Um, and you'll also find that the spruce is lighter in weight when it's dry. Uh, the Douglas fir, when it's dry, Dry, it will be quite a bit heavier and it will as it ages it gets very very hard I don't know when they measure the hardness scale on it um, but I have some Douglas fir um, joists in my house and they're probably about 30 or 40 years old and they are just like rock it's almost impossible to drive nails into them so they're very very hard as they get older uh, compared to spruce which doesn't change that much over time so let's talk about glues and joinery for a moment. Uh, both of these woods are fine with any kind of a yellow glue, um, pretty much any glue you want to throw at them, these will work just fine with. In terms of joinery, depending on what you're building, um, mortise and tannin is probably not ideal, and that's because often it doesn't have the surface structure. The mortise and tannin itself uh, has a little less structure. Sometimes dowels will actually work better because you have more structure because of the circular uh, the circular area of the dowels so you can actually and you can get more of them in a sort of in a lineal area 
the, uh, the best joint for very soft wood like these is often lap joints and that's because you have all of that surface area and the reason for that is because of the compression factor of these soft woods. When they compress like that, when there's mechanics where they can move, that wood starts to give way and that's why joinery is really critical for these very soft woods. Now I'm getting in here as close as I can. These are both Douglas fir examples. Uh, this is what we call a construction grade. And you can see it's got fairly large areas here. The growth rings are fairly large. This, on the other hand, is what they call select. Uh, and you can see it's got very fine grain. The, the growth rings are very tiny. This is actually old growth Douglas fir. And this wood is more expensive than oak. This is a very expensive wood. And it's typically used in houses where you're doing um, casings around windows, something like that, where you want a, 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 a local wood, but you want a really fine grain because you want to highlight um, the, the features of the wood. So you might be asking yourself, so why don't people use spruce or fir for furniture? And I'll tell you exactly why. Most of this stuff is used for construction, house construction, building construction, fences, that sort of thing. Uh, and the reason, one of the reasons is because of the strength. It, it has good strength for building, but not so much for furniture, especially furniture that's getting used a lot. The other problem with using this for furniture is what we call pitch pockets. And both of these woods are susceptible to pitch pockets. And what that is, sometimes when you're milling a piece of wood or, or um, planing or even sanding, what happens? You disturb the wood and underneath the wood there is something called a pitch pocket and that is sap that's inside the tree and it collects in pockets inside both of these woods and as you plane it or sand it all of a sudden you take off that very fine layer of wood and underneath it is sap. Now if that wood has been kiln dried or partially kiln dried it that sap will some of it will crystallize, but if you're air drying it, that sap never gets a chance to crystallize. And over time, that sap will always flow. I have seen sap in, in hard, uh, softwoods um, flowing for 20 years. You can go over to it and you, it's still sticky. And that's because it always keeps flowing. You can't get rid of it. You can't the only way to get rid of it is to cut the whole part of the board out because somewhere deep up inside the board there's a pocket of pitch and it just keeps slowly running down almost like hardened syrup and it's always sticky and you can't cover it, you can't paint it, you can't varnish it, nothing sticks to it. It's just you have to get rid of that wood, cut it away or do something and that can sometimes that'll even crop up even after you've sanded and finished and you know maybe a year or months or years later you'll go over and say what is that blemish on that wood and that's where that um, sap is coming through that's why this is typically not used in furniture making it's more used in sort of rough kind of uh, construction projects now the other reason that um, spruce and fir are not used so much for construction is because you can never really disguise them and that's because of the contrast between the, the light and dark in all of the growth ring lines. When you dye that with wood dyes or with stains you can never really cover that and I can spot a spruce or a fir piece of furniture, and I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. Um, it, you can never get rid of that. You can always spot that that was made out of a less expensive wood because this always shows through no matter what you do. And in fact, even when you paint a wood like these, that, that because it's hard, the dark 
parts are hard and the light parts are very soft, what happens, that hard and soft, it actually even telegraphs through paint. So even when you paint this, unless you do multiple coats, um, it's almost impossible to disguise spruce or fir. So here's an example of some softwoods. I got spruce and fir, and I have over here, I have hardwoods, I have alder and white oak. And remember when I said that hardwoods, you can get soft hardwoods? Well, this is alder, and this is 590 pounds. Remember, the fir is 660 pounds, so it's actually harder than alder. Um, oak, just to give you an example, is 1,360 pounds, so very, very hard wood. So here we go from 420, 660, 590, and almost 1,300, so, or over 1,300. So there's the cross-section of the hardness of all those, but also you can see the texture, see the light and dark here, and the different textures that you can get between the um, softwoods and the hardwoods. Now one of the nice things you can do with softwoods that is much harder to do with most hardwoods, um, and this was popular many, many years ago, and like a lot of things, it's coming back into popularity, but where you can actually take a torch, and turn this up a little bit, and you can actually burn that wood, and because you've got contrast between the dark and the light, you can make that wood highlight. And back in the day, I used to make picture frames this way. I made all sorts of picture frames using this burning method like that. And you can see how you can get some nice effects with that. So that's one of the things that you can do with these softwoods. So I said I would show you some antique furniture uh, from fur. And this is made from fur plywood. I could tell that from across the room. It just, you could just tell it has that look where it's got the very light and the very dark. This is an antique piece. We estimate it's probably about 60, maybe 70 years old. So it's fairly old and it's very hard. The wood, of course, has gotten quite hard, uh, but that's typical of what you would see in furniture made with fur. And that's a local piece uh, that would have been made with this uh, Douglas fir softwood. Well, that concludes my video for today. Just sort of an overview on softwoods, how to select them, how to use them, some of the things you might be able to use them for. And I also did a video a few months ago on working with pine. Uh, and that video is here. If you haven't had a look at that video, it will go nicely with this one so that you'll get a full understanding of the different kinds of softwoods and what you can do with them. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.